To know make? Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the next person I'm about to introduce. I've had a story, and he tells me, Ted, my story is from grass to grace. Please put your hands together for a young, aspiring, prolific leader. Put your hands together for Mr. Ron Asumba. It is both an honor and a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon as we prepare to make history. Thank you, Team PK, for your hard work. The last two years have been, for lack of a better word, an adventure, full of ups and downs. But here we are, about to start a journey that will change the course of history. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Kenya National Congress Party and all its members who this morning nominated Peter Kenneth as the party's presidential candidate. Thank you, KNC. You've picked the right man. I cannot forget to thank Peter Kenneth for giving me this humbling opportunity to speak today. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here before you young and proud to be Kenyan, overwhelmed by a mixture of emotions. I am in a state of despair from the continued lack of visionary leadership in our beloved country. It is a leadership that has created a Siwesmek generation a generation of uninspired and politically apathetic youth. But at the same time, I am hopeful that a new generation of visionary leaders is emerging. Leaders that are tired of the business as usual attitude in the running of the country. I am excited at the new possibilities created by the Constitution we so overwhelmingly voted for in 2010. I am also dejected by the continued show of impunity, even after our collective shame of the post-election violence. But I am energized by the newfound freedom of our judiciary that will hopefully correct yesterday's wrongs. I sense that I am not going through these emotions alone, so if you are as hopeful, if you are as excited, and if you are as energized, let me hear you say, Tuna West Make! Tuna West Make! Tuna West Make! My unlikely appearance here today began 33 years ago, when I was born into a family of six in the legendary Kibera. As I grew up, my folks struggled to ensure we had enough food on the table and got a reasonable education. They took care of their sisters and their brothers, and on various occasions, we stayed with some of them and their children in our small two-roomed house. And they always reminded me, as did every political leader at the time on radio, that we, I, were the leaders of tomorrow. I don't know if my brothers and only sisters still believe in these words, but this is what I believe. That tomorrow they talked about is here. And all Kenyans of my generation need to stand up and do what is right for our country. I lived in Kibera for 12 years, and this year's, ladies and gentlemen, shaped and informed my thinking. I learned how to live against the odds of abject poverty, how to hope through life's daily challenges, even in the face of hopelessness, how to squeeze happiness out of every unhappy situation. I learned 
how to be innovative in order to pay school fees and settle hospital bills. How our neighbors, irrespective of their tribe, were our closest relatives. These were the greatest lessons in my life yet. And then one day I grew up and I discovered that I was not alone. I found out that 60 to 70% of all Kenyans face the same lessons of life every day, that this also was their reality. You can therefore imagine my confusion, anger, and resentment when the place of my fondest childhood memories went up in smoke after the last elections. It was a period when two hungry neighbors suddenly realized they were not relatives. When two parents, both struggling to pay school fees at the same school their children attended, lifted pangas against each other. It was when one mamamboga suddenly struck a match at another's stall because they did not support the same candidate. You can imagine my shame that even as I learned these great lessons, those around me perhaps did not. And even those who did had discarded them for a cause they did not understand or for people they had never met. I was angry that I could not stop it. I cannot speak for anyone else, but it is likely that you too felt this hopelessness, confusion, shame, and anger. It has been four years since then, and I have had the opportunity to introspect and ask myself, what can I do? What must I do? And today I want to tell you what I will do. I will reject leaders who have failed to keep the promises they have made to me. I will reject their continued rhetoric even in this new election cycle. I will reject to accept that lie that we do not have enough resources and therefore cannot build more roads or hospitals. I will refuse to be hoodwinked that we cannot afford to pay our hard-working civil servants better. Yet we ignore their pleas from teachers, lecturers, nurses, doctors, police, and somehow manage to afford a hefty pay rise for our PSS and non-performing MPs, I will reject this. I will not accept to be called by my tribe. I will not accept to be told that I cannot buy land or work or vie for office in a certain region simply because I was not born there. I will hold my leaders accountable for their utterances and actions towards the Kenyan people. I will demand for better services in a government institutions, whether it is hospitals, schools, courts, the land's office. I must make this demand. I will push my leaders to deliver better roads, ensure consistent supply of water and electricity, and equip our hospitals. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon I want to declare that I am tired of pleading and bribing. I am tired of hoping against hopelessness. I am tired of hustling. I am tired of being a government unto myself. What we must do is take charge of the leadership of this country and elect only those who feel and understand our anger, frustration, and hopelessness. We must find leaders who can dream with us of a hassle-free Kenya where every child has a chance to live beyond the age of five, where every family can own a decent home that protects their dignity, 
where every county can afford a referral hospital. Where every mouth in need of food can get at least one square meal a day. We must find leaders who will use our every tax we pay for the benefit of ourselves and not for their own benefits. I know one such leader, and his name is Peter Kenneth. Peter Kenneth understands the pains and frustrations Kenyans are going through. He was born in a poor family and brought up by a mother just like mine who hustled to feed him and take him to school. He was brought up in Eastlands, here in Nairobi, at the heart of Bahati, where the community is as cosmopolitan, poor, and hopeful of a better tomorrow, just like my childhood community in Kibera. Peter Kenneth's schooling in Stray Boys Center was paid for by a well-wisher, and therefore he understands that your neighbor is your closest relative, irrespective of tribe. He knows that tribe does not define you, and he will therefore give equal opportunity to people of all tribes, gender, religion, or race. Peter Kenneth's record in managing the Gatanga CDF shows that he understands what the people want and is faithful in managing the people's money. He has won many accolades for running the best CDF in the country as MP. I want to declare that he will win even more accolades for running the best treasury as president of Kenya. <laughs> Peter Kenneth believes in opportunities for our youth because without the opportunity he got as a young man himself, he would never have been able to feed his family or afford a proper education for Andrea and Andrew. Without the opportunity he was given to attend Sturehe, he would never have developed the skills that he has today that will enable him to take this country out of the rut and into the future. <laughs> Peter Kenneth feels the pain of the rural folk who see their relatives dying every day of common disease. Those to whom access to affordable health care is unheard of. And that is why he wants to build a referral hospital in every county. <clears throat> Peter Kenneth knows how it feels like to sleep hungry. And that is why food security for our nation is dear to his heart. Peter Kenneth believes that it is time for performing horses, not political horses. They say he is not a popular candidate. I say he is definitely the right candidate. This man, Peter Kenneth, is the remedy to our problems. And today, on behalf of all Kenyans of goodwill, on behalf of all suffering families, on behalf of all the youth who are at the brink of hopelessness. I want to say with Peter Kenneth, Tuna West Make. Tuna West Make. Tuna West Make. Thank you. God bless you and God bless Kenya.